New streaming service BritBox is to be launched later this year. Let's take a closer look at this one. BritBox, BBC and ITV set out plans for a new streaming service. So if you like watching reruns of Gavin and Stacey, you're going to absolutely love this streaming service. Shows like Love Island, Gavin and Stacey, Gentleman Jack and Broadchurch will be on BBC and ITV streaming service BritBox when it launches this year. The broadcasters are joining forces to set up the subscription service in the UK as a rival to the likes of Netflix. It will cost £5.99 per month in HD, launching between October and end of December. New programmes will be made especially for BritBox with the first arriving next year. So they're quoting Love Island, Gavin and Stacey. I'm pretty sure both Love Island and Gavin and Stacey are actually on Netflix at the moment in the UK. I may be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I've seen both those on there. Gentleman Jack, I've never even heard of Broadchurch. I've heard, I don't really follow pop culture. I think that's a big thing, but I don't really know what that's about either. But five pound ninety nine a month. Um, the normal Amazon, uh, the normal Netflix subscription cost is about eight ninety nine in the UK for the HD version. So it's a little bit cheaper than Netflix. Obviously, Netflix has an incredible, insane amount of original content. I think last year they produced something like one thousand five hundred hours of original content. I can't see BritBox producing anywhere near that that amount. But let's take a let's take a further read on anyway. So how will BritBox work? The monthly fee will cover multiple screens and devices, which is less than other streaming services. A statement said, yeah, I mean, it's, it's less than Netflix, but Netflix is creating far more original content than they could ever hope to do. Many ITV and BBC programmes will move on to BritBox after they've been broadcast on TV and fallen off broadcasters' own catch-up services, BBC iPlayer and ITV Hub. The BBC is soon expected to get permission from regulator Ofcom to, sheep, to keep shows on iPlayer for a year as standard. I mean, this is questionable because if you're a... Li- a BBC TV licensed payer, which I'm not, and I'm sure many of you watching this video also are not. But if you are, if you're one of those people out there that's still paying this dinosaur subscription service, it's kind of weird because if you also subscribe to Bit, uh, BritBox, you're effectively paying twice. You're paying once through your TV license, which is to fund BBC content. So you're paying that £155 a year. You're paying that once for the BBC to produce content. Uh, and then they're charging you again through BritBox to watch the same content you've you've already paid for once. So seems a little bit of a scam to me. I mean, I'm surprised the BBC. I'm not surprised the regulators are kind of questioning this. It's like it's kind of like <laughs> going against. I mean, I'm all for this. Hopefully, that long term, this is an end to the BBC license fee. They this model, hopefully, in the future, when it comes to renewing the BBC's charter, they can say, well, you've been running a subscription service for like the last how many ever many years. Why don't you use that model permanently? But it's a bit questionable if you're paying for the TV license once and then you're paying for BritBox again. Mm, dodgy ground as far as I'm concerned. Just like, I don't really care. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use this subscription service. I'm also not a license fee payer. So I'm sure some of you out there probably still are though. As well as recent shows, it will also be home to thousands of hours of classic British comedies, dramas and documentaries. And not all BBC and ITV programmes will be automatically moved to BritBox though. Many are made by independent production companies who own the rights and might instead sell them to services like Netflix after their TV broadcasts, as has previously happened with hits like Peaky Blinders. Never seen that either. The BBC and Netflix will also carry on co-producing programmes together as a way of sharing costs, especially for big budget dramas. I mean, yeah, that's something. I don't think I've actually watched it. I don't really watch much Netflix either, to be fair. I don't even know why I pay for Netflix. I, I don't really watch it. Why are the BBC and ITV doing this? Normally rivals, the two broadcasters want to get a foothold in the fiercely competitive commercial streaming world against the likes of Netflix, Amazon, Now TV, while Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus are launching soon. The BBC and ITV tried to launch something similar a decade ago but were blocked by regulators. Now they're trying to catch up with their heavyweight competitors. Netflix has more than 150 million subscribers worldwide and reportedly spent $12 billion on programmes last year. Uh, Netflix uh, saw its share price plummet this week, though, after adding fewer paid subscribers than expected in the last three months, with price rises blamed. I mean, Netflix is getting quite woke. It's one of the reasons I don't actually really like Netflix programs that much anymore. Like Probably like a year or two, they weren't really as woke as they are now. Like, everything on Netflix seems to have a mild political agenda, which just makes it like, you just want to switch off. If you're watching light entertainment, you don't want to have like a political narrative throughout the storyline, which in my opinion, Netflix does have. So I'm questioning, like, cancelling Netflix. I mean, I'm a YouTube premium uh, subscriber. I'm an Amazon 
uh, Prime subscriber and Netflix as well. I mean, it's still worthwhile having these subscription services rather than paying for a TV license and one other subscription. So cost-wise, it doesn't really cost too much to have Netflix as well. But Netflix is pretty woke these days, so I can see them going broke long term. But it won't go broke, but definitely, you, you know, people can see through it. People just don't... When they watch Light Entertainment, they want to switch off. They don't want some sort of left-wing narrative played through their TV programme they're watching, which Netflix has been doing, especially over the last few years. Let's read on. The BBC and ITV launched BritBox in North America in 2017, showing programmes like Midsummer Murders, Poiret? I don't know about pop culture. and no, I think that's an old thing, is it? Poiret? And Only Fools and Horses. It now has six, 650,000 subscribers, which ITV chief executive Caroline McCall said was exceeding its targets. I mean, I can see this being popular in America, where they have less access to like British TV programs. I mean, if you're a license fee subscriber already uh, and you watch things like UK TV Gold and all these like reruns, they're already on there. So I don't really see the appeal. I, I don't think this will be as popular in the UK as it probably is in America. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe ITV, BBC are expecting that. Maybe thinking like North America really is their core domain. People love things like Only Fools and Horses, Mr. Bean, all that classic English comedy over there. Uh, but let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Probably the interesting points to take away from this. As far as I can assess, you won't need a TV license to watch BritBox, so this could be a nice stepping stone for people moving it away from um, paying for a TV license, which is quite expensive, £155 a year, to something slightly cheaper while still maintaining access to some BBC programmes. I mean, if you're not fussed about sport and news, like the stuff that really has to be live broadcast to get any you know, kind of benefit from it, if you're just looking at the classic comedies, maybe this BritBox, Britbox will be a good stepping stone from people that are trying to get away from the TV license to something cheaper. So I kind of support it going down that avenue. I think ultimately they've missed the boat. Like Amazon and Netflix are just too big now. To try and catch up with these giants is too little, too late. As a BBC, ITV, they're not really creating much original, innovative content, in my opinion. Yes, there's a few things. You say most of these things are created by independent content um, production companies anyway. So, like, Netflix can just give these companies money directly or any other streaming service can give these companies the BBC and ITV aren't bringing anything unique to the party in my opinion it's old school technology they're the legacy media they're only here because they've been around for so long let me know your thoughts and opinions on this I mean it's good if people stop paying a TV license and maybe use something like BritBox I mean say I've subscribed to Amazon Prime Netflix and YouTube Premium I pretty watch like 95% YouTube but I'm more of a factual kind of person I don't really watch much fiction and rather just keep up with what's going on in the world and uh, listen to different people's thoughts and opinions and watching science stuff so I'm more of a YouTube kind of guy but I get people that like uh, fiction stuff maybe this is the way to go but Netflix is always going to be better I think last year they generated something like 1,500 hours of unique content and um, BBC and ITV combined have nowhere near the capacity the production capacity to produce that level of content let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Is it good? Is it bad? Will we see the BBC in another 10 years' time? Or is it just another dinosaur company that is not really producing anything new? Jason from Liberty Bunker sign off, and I'll see you in the next video.